No. Hey, I... Patrick, I see Per is also in line. Perfect. He's connecting. How, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, good. It's a rainy day here today, so everything feels just like blah, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's normal yeah. winter, fall season. Yeah, here today I have to I have to say that there was some sun, so that was nice. But uh, I also noticed that on the forecast for the rest of the week, it will not be uh, so nice. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not like a winter person anyway. So I, I like 30 degrees plus and just summer beach whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do like the, the, the seasons, but... Um, in general also at least if there is sun then it's okay <laughs> yeah exactly hey pear hey pear how are you doing oh you're uh, i'm going to unmute you Hello. yes yeah. oh. here you go we can hear you okay hi hi how good how are you sure fine <laughs> not as tired as last time i i, I came late and i was you know, so I'm quite relaxed today. Yeah, yeah, and that's nice. Looking forward to to this chat again. Yeah, and thank you also for suggesting uh, the topic. So I'd say uh, I will have to check so now and then if there are some other people um, going because I know that there are some other people that wanted to join as well. But in the meantime, I'm going to uh, share my screen. Um, so... Yep. All right. So yeah, we um, let's kick off. We indeed we um, took your suggestion per, and mm -hmm. you can all see my slides, by the way, right? Just checking. We can see. Yeah, I can see. Okay. Them. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, so first of all, um, yeah, we. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, That's quite true. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I have another person in, in line. Wait just a second. Okay. How can I admit? Yes. Okay, now we have Iris also joining the call. Um, so I'm going to share my screen i am still screen sharing yes i can see the slides everything is fine all right perfect so let's start let's kick off um so the idea today is that we are going to share at least 10 different ways for questions that want to start an online business and and um uh, i think i have to mute it is. Voilà. Ah, Maria is also joining, admit. Okay. <laughs> All right. So should we just kick off, start, begin? Yes. All right. Go ahead. I'll, I'll check. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, no worries. Take care of the others. And uh, the presentation, which is basically about is, um, yeah, how to turn your passion into an online business. It's, it can be applied to um, basically everything that you are passionate about, but we are most likely speaking about the equestrian industry and uh, how you can actually prepare yourself to uh, create a business online and how to run it like on an autopilot and uh, spend more time of things that you are um, yeah, passionate about and that you, you really care about. So yeah, um, we introduced Lewis and I today 10 different ways of how to start online. It's not only one way how we can actually um, achieve this. There are multiple other ways and there's enough space uh, for each one of us. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, it, everything sounds interesting in the beginning, but we want to make sure that you understand uh, different kind of ways and how you can apply them for yourself. Exactly. 
So um, let's start with the first one, uh, which is in affiliate marketing. And for those who are not familiar with affiliate marketing is um, that this is actually an idea of a concept that you earn commissions online by promoting or selling products that you are a fan of and that you want to endorse. So in this option, you do not need to have your own products or services because you are actually endorsing other people's uh, projects uh, products or services, and you can do so through social media or all other uh, ways of creating content such as uh, blogging, po podcasts, but also just word of mouth or paid ever advertising and so on. Um, it's a very easy and fast way to create an income and um, it's both possible in the, with the free advertising as well as with, with paid advertising strategies. And now, if we want to um, really apply this for in the question niche, niche let's say that uh, you were to sign up um, with an affiliate network and they are selling um, they're selling brands for horse saddles or specific horse tech or online horse courses such as for instance how to uh, how to do shiatsu on your horse or the Tristan Tucker method for who's um, who knows that um, also what you see a lot especially within social media is that people are using horse fashion and then you see that uh, okay they are actually earning uh, commissions when using the link that they are sharing on their social media. So what happens is that those people, they are actually endorsing and just sharing those links and they are sharing nice content that people want to uh, click on. And if they do, um, it leaves a cookie trace in their browser so that if they would like to buy one of those products, then within a certain time frame, it can be days, but it depends on uh, each affiliate network. Um, then you'll get, an, and they, will, they would buy something, then they will uh, give you a commission for that. So that's actually um, the concept of affiliate marketing. It is the, the easiest way, actually, and that's the way that um, I started out as well into the online business. I had no technical knowledge before, and I think you have no headaches about products that you might have to create. You don't have any headaches of courses that you might have to create. You basically choose just another person's product and you advertise for it, even though um, it, it doesn't necessarily need, uh, need to be a product that you you have used yourself but we recommend doing that because um, out of the experience you will know how the product has helped you and if you are proud of sharing that product it it's most likely the easiest way to refer to to other people and that you can gain and make a commission out of it indeed all right, yeah, so we've got some other um, examples here as well. So let's say, for instance, um, not necessarily super close with the uh, equestrian uh, niche, but you also see like um, jewelry that is really for, um, yeah, with, you know, the, the horseshoe or uh, an equestrian um, design. And that those are things that they're often looking for ambassadors as well. So if you get, um, if you get, how do you say the chase some on social media in, with the question if you want to become an ambassador that's often also uh, an affiliate marketing program that they are asking you to sign up for so um, that can be very interesting because it's actually very very easy and indeed uh, you can you can get um, get ahead with get started with that without much um, yeah without much need just uh, for anyone who is on the call, if you have any questions, just feel free to interrupt us and sure. ask right away so that we can answer. I might. <laughs> yeah, I have many questions anyway. So <laughs> starting up in this business, um, I have questions about sales online. I have questions about horses. So but I think, yeah, anything that is uh, sort of suggesting an idea or concept or ways to find products and services and uh, how to implement them if what you should avoid if you have you know if good or bad deals in affiliates or anything i have too many questions i think 
Yeah, I mean, everything is just step by step. Don't overwhelm yourself. I mean, uh, affiliate marketing is um, something that you can uh, consider at the beginning, but also take a look at uh, different kinds of affiliate marketing methods. There are uh, cheaper products that you can uh, sell and also high tickets. So basically um, what we, uh, Louis and I, um, did at the beginning are uh, high ticket um, services mm -hmm. that you can basically uh, promote and um, sell online that gives you the fastest result because you just need one client and that is willing to pay maybe 3000 uh, euros in a service and you get half of it of the commission. So you have earned uh, 1,500 just by referring somebody. So that's the magic of the high ticket affiliate marketing. But you can also choose, uh, you know, lower quality um, services, um, just a simple product that you can refer and you get still maybe 15% of the commission. It's just like, um, it doesn't create like an in, uh, income that you can exchange for your daily job, but it fills the pocket basically yeah and uh to products itself uh lewis and i we will come back later on uh different kind of uh ways that you can basically get your product into your business and sell it maybe your own product or do drop shipping but we will uh cover that uh in a bit yeah. Indeed. And also at the end, I've got two uh, funnel examples. And um, I think that is that might be interesting to to get a, a larger puzzle um, that is coming together as well. So, OK, um, let's move on. So we've got uh, affiliate marketing, then we've got blogging. This is um, actually something that's already quite familiar. So um, it's very well known. So basically how it works is that you, you write content on your website um, and there you can, you have two options or you enter your, uh, your affiliate links over there and you create, you get commissions based on those uh, affiliate links. Or if you have your own products and services, of course, then um, people will find you through search engine optimization, which is actually the abbreviation of just that you will be ranked in the search engines so that people can find you based on their keywords and search terms. So in that way, they will find their way to your products and services as well. And of course, um, uh, if they buy from your website, then you'll earn your income as well. So there's a few pros and cons to that. So one of the pros is that it's um, super easy. Everyone can do it. And it's a f one of the free ways to generate website traffic. One of the downsides is that it's quite time consuming and it takes more time to get results. So um, it, it's, it can take up to six months before you start seeing really results also because the search engines, they will, um, you know, they see a lot of new sites coming up and then they tend to wait a little bit before they start to know, okay, this is a, a high quality content website and not just any other website like so many people are creating. Uh, these days because most of the people they are trying to blog they never get uh, passed for blog articles <laughs> so um, that's uh, um, yeah things to consider um, yeah so I've yeah we've put some also um, several content ideas like how to five tips to five common mistakes and then specifically within the equestrian niche uh, five common mistakes when choosing a horse saddle or buying a horse, choosing a farrier, buying a horse trailer. And those are also immediately products that you might consider that you want to look affiliates networks that they that you can earn commission on those kind of um, kind of products. And if you would were to look up um, horse trailer affiliate programs, then of course, this would be a high ticket, high ticket um, product that you can um, earn commissions on buying a horse of course you can um, buy horses on all different um, um, price tags but um, I personally haven't seen any affiliate network selling horses personally have you Patrick? No I think that's something also not well known in the industry yeah. so um, I think this is more like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, business um, 
uh, affiliate marketing, basically products is more likely, uh, you know, those physical products like trailers, saddles, and things like that. Not everyone is offering affiliate marketing, but they will have on their own website a disclaimer that will tell you if they have an affiliate marketing program that you can join or not. So um, it doesn't mean that if you see a product online that this is automatically a product that you can promote. They will say that on the website itself, if they offer an affiliate program, you have to sign up for it. It's basically creating a free account so that they can keep track on the commissions that they pay you out. And um, yeah, all the products that they have listed and on the affiliate product, you are able to uh, promote and earn a commission. Indeed. And then other ways of creating contents would be, you know, reviews of, of several brands that you can do a comparison with or, you know, product reviews. Uh, you can create a checklist. You can, you can get so creative as you like. Of, um, yeah, also, you know, debate posts, news posts, horse quotes, research or statistic posts, uh, or, yeah, on the topic of nutrition, etc. cetera. Um, I'm assuming that if, if there are questions, just feel free to interrupt, of course. If yeah, we also have the, the chat. Um, if you are uncomfortable coming in front of the camera, just type in your questions. I left a message. Whoever wants to uh, type in the question, Iris or Maria, if you are interested, then just give us a question and we will answer it. Perfect. All right. Okay. So uh, the next one. I have uh, uh, just a question, or uh, um, for me as a very as a new beginner in horsemanship of any kind. Okay, for me to write a blog would be sort of uh, putting myself on a very very high horse. Okay, so I cannot educate my any followers by being a newbie, but if I sort of um, go the other way, I go for my I start by who I am not pretending to be some somebody different, but let's say I go for a course or I go for something that I'm learning, then I sort of, I can um, still endorse or, or refer to this course that I'm attending. And I can sort of promote a, a course that is teaching me from where I am and, and, and sort of progressing. I can show that journey of mine um, and for that would be an easier way for me as a newbie at least. Or do you see it differently if like a blogging would always be sort of you educate your people or can you sort of blog your journey as well? Or how do you, how do you see this? You That's a good topic it? actually, um, because what we recommend is always when you start and you are a newbie, blog about your journey. People want to know who you are. People uh, relate to your experience. And uh, if they are newbies, they can relate so easily. Right. And um, that, that just gives you um, uh, a better perspective in your business because you basically share what you experience. And yeah. uh, that makes you as a, as a human being. And because a lot of people mm -hmm. online are still being scared of uh, scams and uh, frauds. Uh, I, I think that the best is just to be yourself and uh, right. show that to other people. And that's the value. Um, we always talk about add value to, to, your, to your business. Um, and this is basically the value that you are sharing your own perspective and your own experience. A lot of people that are starting out with the SFM, um, yep basically um, promoting it uh, by their own experience. They haven't had any knowledge. They haven't had any uh, previous experience with the online world. And they're just sharing literally what they have learned. So, uh, and that, you know, makes it so much easier. Okay, yep, thank you. Indeed, and in the beginning, if you are um, starting out, a lot of people, they, they whether it's via blogging or via social media, if people, they see you and they, um, I always call the building your know, like, and trust factor. And um, even if you're only a several steps ahead, um, then they will see you as a, a guide. And as long as you can help them and you add value, just as, as Patrick mentioned, then you'll be perceived as um, useful and valuable. And I think that's the, ba the, the most important thing, you, how you want to come across. Because, just to, to, to add on that, uh, because I, I was reacting maybe 
were thinking wrongly about the concept of blogging when you said five tips of the, doing this and the right and wrong of certain things, which I do not know. That's sort of a, I, I don't have to use those. <laughs> you know, if I cannot teach them, or well, shouldn't teach them, right? Because I don't know. So at least I can blog in my, my journey for things, five things I have learned or whatever. Definitely. Absolutely, yeah, indeed. Yeah, five things you have learned how to step foot in the online equine uh, industry, something like that. Just easy and simple what you have learned. Sure. And uh, always remember, um, no matter um, what you are writing about or um, you know sharing about, it's just you most likely are one step ahead of somebody who has already uh, who wants to start out. You are already beginning yeah. the journey, and you can share um, the moment where you were, you know, caught in the thought of joining, for example, and you can help those people out who are, you know, uh, kind of. Uh, fearful and uh, scared about that step. Just mm -hmm. one example. Great. And um, yeah, if you if you don't feel super comfortable in the equestrian news, what you also can do is uh, you know check um, in the in Google and type in um, several keywords, and then Google will start to give you um, things that people are searching for without entering or typing them in complete completely or if you go into forums you also see okay what are equestrians asking for and even though if you're yourself not an expert i assume that your daughter can can also help you with that and maybe uh, or maybe if you uh, you can also do research online and of course that takes some extra time but if you manage to create a very good content post and although you're not an expert but you've done your research then you'll also come across as an expert exactly yeah okay so if we um go further to drop shipping uh, drop shipping is actually uh, more product based so that means that you will be offering uh, pro your own products and brand your own products, but the 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 difference with pro drop shipping and um, just selling physical products from A to Z yourself is that um, it goes straight from the manufacturer to the clients. So you don't need, so th this has a lot of advantages, such as that you don't have to struggle with inventory, stock placements, you can manage everything from your own laptop. Um, often those, um, those shipments um, companies, they also um, arrange after sales um, services so that you actually only have to focus on your online marketing and keeping track of your or orders. And yeah, that you need your own brand. That's something that I've mentioned. And then you could create, of course, your own web shop to showcase your products. Um, and that could be as, for instance, a horse salesman, but you can also sell horse tech, horse jewelry, interior uh, designs, which, uh, yeah, is a bit, maybe a bit a bridge further. But let's say if you've got, um, wood sharpening skills or um, leather, something with leather, then uh, you might uh, bridge for interior deco uh, uh, interior designs um, as well. Yeah, the way how drop shipping basically works is that um, as Louis just said, you have your own brand, a customer is going on your website, they purchase a product, you will receive um, a, an order and you pass the order to the manufacturer and the manufacturer will uh, send the package directly to your customer. That's it. You don't need to package the product. You don't need to uh, see how many products you have in stock. Everything is done um, on the manufacturer side you don't have to take care of this. You care about your customers, customer service, and the orders that you get, and you just pass it on. Exactly. Yeah. So, but then, yeah, yeah uh, just uh, before you uh, get, go to the next slide, it's just we have all the information in our import expert program in the SFM. So this is um, just another way of creating income. There are so many ways. We covered affiliate marketing, which is basically the, the basic foundation 
Um, and if you choose to do that on a product base, you can choose uh, import experts where everything is covered on how to build your uh, online web shop. Indeed. All right. Maybe you want to bridge. Um, yes, yes. So selling physical products from A to uh, Z is basically stock and inventory at home and managing packaging, shipping customers support on your own and uh, basically all the opposite that is um, from drop shipping. You will have to manage all the products on your own, not the manufacturer. And you, you know, keep track of orders. Um, it's basically the same with drop shipping, but um, yeah, you you have to manage basically your own uh, product. You 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 uh, uh, order them, you receive them, and then you send it to your own customers. And still, branding is key um, because there are uh, tons of other um, web shops already outside. But um, that doesn't mean that there's no space for you anymore. It's all about branding and the message which you want to bring across social media, or uh, you can also use uh, blogging, podcasts, and just refer to your uh, web shop. But still, again, this is all explained in our import experts education. And um, yeah, there, there are examples for upselling for instructors or vets, farriers, and maybe your own equine artwork. So you, you, you are an equine photographer and you shoot, um, you know, nice pictures, you print it on canvas and you sell it to, to other people and you, you're going to create an online shop around uh, horse art that you can, um, you know, create. And um, we, we have actually in the community, in the SFM community, um, a lot of people who uh, are doing that right now. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Sandrine Heck, for example, uh, if you are in the community, um, you type in Sandrine Heck, I'll just leave it here in the chat. Uh, they are traveling all around the world and they take pictures uh, with their um, cameras and basically, how is it called? Uh, drones. They're doing drone footages mm -hmm. and they travel all over the world taking uh, drone footages and printing them on canvas and reselling them to people. And this is such an easy and nice way how you can fulfill your, your passion. Their passion was to, um, you know, travel around the world and see different things. They just print it on canvas and here you go. They have their online web shop. This is, for example, a way how you can sell physical products. Indeed. And just to make a, a distinction, because the between uh, drop shipping and selling physical products, um, from from my opinion, at least, I think if you are to if you feel like, OK, I'm more into selling physical products, then which of the two should I choose? I would say that um, if you are selling products that are already being created somewhere, for instance, on Alibaba or, or those kind of um uh, websites maybe if you are familiar with that or if not don't uh, break your head about, about it but in any case um, a distinction between something that is already being produced generally a lot and uh, something that you are really creating for yourself or that is really specified because you are a vet for instance or you are a farrier um, or for instructors because especially within the med world for the, um, the medicine world for and then I'm talking about vet, vets or um, farriers. I can imagine that uh, not everybody can just um, order those kind of products. So you need to be a vet or a farrier to, uh, to be able to buy those kind of products. So that also means that you'll be the only one that can be um, selling those physical products from A to Z. But that would be actually a very good thing because those are things that you can get commissions on for yourself. And uh, as you are going or visiting your clients anyway, you can uh, advise them those products. And um, that's what we call upselling. And then yes. for a queen artwork, indeed, um, we've, we already mentioned photography. Um, but some people, they like it. They're, uh, they're more into... Um, with clay, you know, um, making those sculptures. Yeah, thank you. Sculptures or even drawings, uh, those kind of things. 
um, yeah, that can be something that you are, of course, personally making yourself as well. So that cannot be manufactured anyway. So that would be something that you want to sell yourself as well. So I think that makes sense. Um, yeah. Then the next one, uh, consulting. Um, this requires that you are more of a specialist in your field. So this um, might not be... Um, for everybody now but um, if you've shown and you you have some testimonials or you, you show that you can help people further in a certain situation if you build up your your name and your no like and trust factors to keep it with the same words um, then um, you can start thinking of um, creating your funnel and this is a funnel I don't know have whether everybody has heard of the word funnel yet but that basically means that you um, in, in very easy words that means that you start with the base product and then you upsell you upsell again you upsell again and that's actually the funnel because in the beginning a lot of people will buy the um, uh, will buy your first level product but then your higher ticket and the, the, the more price your price will increase the less clients you'll, um, um, you'll be selling to. And this is, consulting is actually a higher ticket offer. So there, um, I've, I've seen a very interesting uh, video. Uh, I think it was Russell Branson, but he says that, um, you know, the, one of the first things that people want to sell you is, you know, the do it yourself. And the, here's a course on how you can do it yourself. And this is quite relatively low price ticket. But if people say, okay, that sounds very interesting, then they are saying, okay, yeah, but I can do it on my own. Won't you do, do, don't you want to do this for me? And then you can say, well, um, I've got to do it together program. And that's actually an upsell because of course you're investing more time. It's not something that you can automate. So then it will be a higher price. On top of that, um, if people are still like, yeah, but I really don't want to spend my own time on this, then that's actually the next one. I'm already bridging to that already, but it's the do it for you, which is of course that you are doing the work for someone else and that's uh, the highest price ticket, basically. Um, an interesting scaling thing, because of course um, we are, basically talking about, you know, we want to start a business online. So how, how can we still scale this? Well, the thing is that the do it together can still be done in groups as well. Uh, think of group coaching or group uh, consulting that um, um, exists as well. Um, you get, you have to be a little bit creative with, uh, with those things and to name just a few examples within the equestrian niche, again, we've got, uh, for instance, horse clinics, but also the, the Tristan Tucker method. Um, we, um, yeah, we can create a course on um, uh, how to fall off a horse safely or for nutrition, how to build a decent parkour for the show jumpers amongst us, or how to overcome fear, something very common when um, uh, dressage people or yeah, just questions in general, they are doing competition, uh, trailer training, how to make your horse saddle broken, halter broken, and so on. Or because this, these are all, all equestrian niche related, but if you are going through the, these, um, uh, those courses, you'll also gain a lot of new marketing skills, which are also very useful for customer acquisition or lead generation, whether it is for vets or for farriers or for horse instructors. Um, you can, I don't know whether this is already a bit too complicated or not. Um, but um, the point is that you can use your skills to help others, your marketing skills to help others in the equestrian niche as well. So that's the, the main point here. Um, so I would say don't get lost in, in, in certain terms in the meantime. And uh, that would actually mean that if you are uh, getting good results with this, then you can also um, sell your marketing strategy consulting for basically everyone within or also beyond the equine markets. 
Um, Patrick, do you want to add something to that? Yeah, I just want to add something because I think consulting can be one of the most scariest parts because uh, you, you say I'm not an expert in, in anything related to in the, uh, in the equestrian industry. You don't have to be. Uh, Pair, for example, if you have, uh, you know, uh, maybe another, um, uh, you know, um, uh, experience or uh, career-wise uh, experience that you can uh, consult on and, uh, you know, educate other people about. That's something that you can consider, but consulting basically comes um, or do people, people do that when, when they have a background in their career of doing something like, uh, uh, you know, designers or um, uh, graphic designers, for example, they, they teach people how to um, create something online, uh, drafts and uh, whatsoever. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the, the most, the, the heaviest part on starting an online business. Just from my personal experience, for other people, could it be very easy? But um, I think compared to the other options that we are giving, that's something that you have to put more work into. Yeah. I agree, indeed. And this um, is also a bridge to the next topic, which is freelancing. Um, and this goes a bit further even because that means that you are doing it independently for your customers so this is like the highest ticket so that basically means it's to do it for you um, to put it in those worlds um, so yeah one of those the digital services that you can that you learn and can actually uh, apply in, in this way is for instance within photoshop editing or graphical design crafting products, um, lead generation, as I already mentioned in the slide before, that basically means that you're actually getting prospects online. And that do not, does not necessarily mean they're already, um, that there has already occurred a sale, but um, it's those are prospects, basically. Um, yeah, then we've got marketing strategy, web design, copywriting, or email marketing configuration, uh, funnel creation, or actually, all other kinds of tools and you can do this for basically everyone but of course if your passion is within the equestrian um, niche or even within a sub niche for instance like a uh, horse net um, uh, natural horsemanship for instance which is an equestrian sub niche <laughs> then um, yeah you can also um, address those companies that are um, doing that and say hey I can help you with this and that and I'm uh, and I am a specialist in this. Um, yeah, Patrick, do you want to add something to this? No, I think you covered everything. Are there any questions open? I don't think so. So <laughs> okay. let's move on. Then we've got uh, YouTube. This is, um, I think, quite easy to, to understand, but maybe not everybody knows how this actually works. So YouTube, you can use YouTube both organically and promotional. So organically, that would actually mean that you create a videos, you publish them. And um, over time, if you create your own channel and people start viewing those, um, your videos, people will start to like them, engage you, they get comments, they get shared and so on. So then your audience starts to grow organically. And then that's the difference with promotional, which means that you are paying to, um, for people to watch your videos. And that can boost, uh, a combination can of course boost your, um, um, yeah, depends a bit on the strategy and what you are using YouTube for. But if you are using YouTube as um, a source to generate an income, then you can create a YouTube channel about your lifestyle or how you can help or educate others. So for instance, if you are um, a vet or a farrier, you can start uh, creating content like um, the five most um, uh, injuries that horses have, how to overcome them uh, as a horse fair as a farrier, uh, uh, the different types of horseshoes and how you how to choose how to make a, a decent choice, for instance. Um, in a, yeah, in photography, tips and tricks in dress, dressage, you can get creative as you like. Um, 
And on those things, if people will start to type those things and look for it, they, um, they will start to follow you. And as the more followers you get, you get commission based on two things. One is how many people watch your videos. And on the other side, if other people start to show ads on your videos. So that would be a double income, actually. Um, or at least, yeah, double income. That would be two separate streams, uh, basically. I hope that's clear and it makes sense. Uh, yeah, I, I want to give an example um, for YouTubers, for example. Um, I popped up the name Matt Harnecke um, in the chat, for example. That person, um, Harnecke, I think I spelled him right. Um, he is a YouTuber from Australia and moved to the Netherlands. And he recorded his whole journey on uh, how about his move and about equestrian. In addition, uh, uh, through this career, um, he's, I think, uh, a model and uh, basically promotes all his stuff through photography about YouTube. And he has a lot and tons of people who are watching his videos and he makes promotions in those videos. He has um, uh, companies who are approaching him about mentioning just only their name in the video or it's sponsored by this and this company and he makes money out of that it's a good and perfect example on how it could look like but uh don't be scared he he has a huge following and it all takes work so he didn't do it yesterday and you know gained um over a hundred thousand followers he took his time and it took some years to to gain that but for example, um, you know, just um, uh, vlog, for example, about your lifestyle, how you, you know, go to the stable, prepare your horse for a lesson. That could be a, just a one minute, uh, that could be a video that it's about five or 10 minutes long. People will watch it. People are curious about how you do things. And um, we also have in our community, um, the 90 day video challenge, if you don't feel comfortable about being present on uh, on video but you you think that could fit into your online business niche then you can learn how to speak in front of the camera that to just be more comf confident in uh in speaking in uh the way how you should speak or how you can you know uh be or look like a normal person in front of the camera and don't you know lose the thought or you know uh, lose the words so that's that's how we cover basically um our members we have this 90 day video challenge in our uh, community and if you go through it, you will see tons of different people and other people building their online business and relating to um, the journey about how to be better in front of camera. That's the best, um, the best way on how to learn it and the best way to dive into um, YouTube revenue, basically. Indeed. And just a, like a comic thing for me, I also did the, the the 90 day video journey. And that was something that I was had been procrastinating a lot on because I was like, yeah, how can I learn something from this? It's just, you know, pulling some videos and then uh, it will be okay. But then I actually started doing it. And then I started noticing that it took me all, almost 30 videos before I even uh, get the habit of looking into the camera and not beside it for instance um and um yeah of course if you start looking into your first your 30th your 60th or your 90s best video you'll clearly see a lot of a lot of differences uh, in how you come across uh, especially also yeah with with the things you say your confidence the energy you're radiating and you'll get a lot to uh, a lot of ideas because you'll see other people's videos as well of course so um, there's no need to feel uncomfortable uh, there because it's a safe um, closed environment let's say okay does it also include um, like say um, how, you, how you compose the, the, the video content or beginning end or does it include what sort of uh, I mean can you do editing by yourself or Will the other students editing for you, or special effects, or how you profile yourself as a sort of a geeky guy or a funny guy, or you know you have those 
extra spice. I mean, certain people have have an attitude, let's say, or have some sort of extra feature that sort of people, you know, or how much yourself mm -hmm. do you need to be? I mean, is there a sort of, you know, <laughs> I don't know. So, so I think I do understand your question. It's just um, always be yourself. If throughout the 90 day uh, video challenge, um, you know, personally, I've been through it as well. I, I thought of, you know, being somebody else and being that specialist and being that, uh, you know, I, I know better than you. It doesn't work because um, uh, we are all in the same boat. And um, if you present yourself as who you are, if you, not, you know, have a nice feature about yourself, if you're a funny guy, bring it into your videos, people can relate to it. If you are more likely a soft spoken person, other people will relate to it as well. Uh, I'm, for example, I, I, I'm totally shy in, in front of strangers and I, I, it took me a while to be you know, comfortable in front of camera. Yeah. So um, that's something that I have learned and gained through it. And I think um, it's, it's just learning by doing and then you will see where, you know, you kind of lead yourself and what your strength is and uh, what your uh, basically you think, you know, can be left out. So um, it's all development in the journey. But, I, but I, I see some guys or I have a, a certain person in mind that watched a few days ago, but, you know, he would not be that person if I met him, okay? He has, um, uh, I mean, he has, <laughs> he makes it a, a thing, okay? In every video or every things he said that could be, you know, uh, sort of demolition of his face and pops and here and there effects and you know, has sort of uh, uh, it's a show thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people watch because it's a, he has this guy, you know. Yes. So I think that is not being himself, really. I mean, if I met him and talked to him, I don't think he would say slap you and things like that you know like <laughs> so, so yeah <laughs> but that's the that's the um that's the way of understanding your avatar your avatar okay. is basically yeah, your customer yeah. right sure. and he understands his audience and mm -hmm. he knows of how they perceive the message and how what to expect and if sure. he is the person that is editing a lot and you know bringing those uh yeah. actions and things into okay. place okay. um he is known of that this is basically his branding yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. um of course you don't have to be that person in real life no, no. but <laughs> sure. he understands his his customers and uh he it's um you know, they, they recognize him through uh, through a hundred other people. They will recognize right. him for that fact. So yeah. yes. Yeah. But so my question would be: Does this ninety day challenge thing include certain tips and tricks along the way to make a YouTube, you know, yes. attractive? Let's say. Yes. So what yeah. um, if you type into the. Uh, the Facebook group because it's in the Facebook group okay. and then uh, tips to for, for your videos or um, if you, for instance um, even myself I, I also done so, several videos on uh, how to increase your audio quality and, and I tried for instance with different camera types and all those things but those are of course already quite some quite some time ago but you would even find me of course and, and Patrick also if you'd like because everybody just stays in there but um the thing is that the 90 day video, video journey is really um, one also a very, very um, full content uh, page or, or group, basically. So I'm sure that you can find everything over there. But even though also in the dashboard, in the SFM dashboard, if you would type in um, tips for you for video editing and for mm -hmm. um, you can find also a lot of things over there. Very good. So, are you already in the in the SFM tribe pair? Uh, tribe, uh, group, something I can't remember. There were, <laughs> for me, it's a multi-layer thing, and then I'm not really sure to what stage I have come and how much further I need to go. So, yeah. but yes, I've been into this a week now. So. 
Yeah, it will um, most likely, um, you know, the further you go into your journey and through the modules, uh, the more you will learn about the tribe. But the, pro the yeah. tribe is a place to be where we offer a lot of different courses. For editing, for example, we have a guy, his name is Ruud Nellenstein. He's from the Netherlands as well. He shows you how to use um, Filmora. It's a video editing software okay. and how you can do those special effects, for example. Right. Um, but um, I wouldn't stress out yet. Um, just go through your models, learn, and uh, this will come then for sure. Sure. Thanks. Okay, the next one. Um, maybe you want to cover that one, Patrick? Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, um, sorry, uh, answer Iris. <laughs> ah, nice. um, if you can go ahead, if you don't mind. Yeah, so the next one is sell equestrian pictures. And actually, we already mentioned this um, slightly several times, but that ba basically means that um, if you are creating your own pictures and you can sell them for commercial use, um, it maybe sounds easy, but it, there's really a high demand for this. So um, you can also let other people get your license of use and um, then you can uh, get contribution and income by selling your pictures. So there are multiple websites available to sell your pictures. So um, Shutterstock, for instance, and uh, we've got pixel.com and uh, Pixabay uh, and other uh, examples as well. Um, Patrick probably knows other examples. Yeah, there's tons of different uh, websites on Unsplash or Pexels and Pixabay you have mentioned. Yeah. This is basically all um, websites who are for royalty free pictures, but also for paid pictures. So you can choose your license. Each picture has basically a license that you can, uh, you know, uh, set up for your own pictures, either for commercial use or for non-commercial use, and you can sell it to other people. So you are basically in charge of how your pictures can be used and you can set up your um, uh, charge of the pictures, how much it would cost to you know get your picture and where you can or the customer wants to use your picture um, there are a lot of tons of free um, pictures but the better quality ones are of course the ones that are being sold exactly then uh, another one uh, writing a book this uh, might sound a bit far-fetched um into if you hear it for the first time but uh, there is a lot of uh, things that people are really finding difficult to teach their horse so for instance how to make your horse uh, halter broke saddle broke trailer broke all those kind of things is um also how to we, we had um, that's an actually an example of course from uh, victoria last week she was selling uh, she was talking about her idea of um creating um yeah healing horses with the use of herbs and spices because she knows a lot about that and she also uses it for themselves for, for her family and so on uh, so i um, i uh, in, uh, added that to the slide as well but you also have you know other uh, alternative ways of healing for instance uh, shiatsu and other kinds of therapy um physio physio uh, how do you say that a physio uh, therapy yeah, physiotherapy, indeed. You've got that for both for horses as well as for people. So uh, if people have um, injuries, then you can um, also create content about it, how to avoid those kind of injuries or what you can do. And of course, it will never be the same as them, but it can be a good uh, starting point. Uh, and then um, uh, after that, they, if you... Um, you, you can give them exercises on how to avoid certain uh, certain injuries and then um, upsell with your own um, yeah consulting of course but um, yeah other ideas how to learn your horse yeah xyz this is very broad it can be also in different uh, horse disciplines dressage show jumping natural horsemanship all those other um, things voltage even um, yeah there are many other things that are a bit less common um, how to make the best equine pictures so if you are like a photograph an equine photographer then you can also create a book uh, on how to teach other people how to do that 
And as a second upsell, think about an e-course or so, but then we're already <laughs> talking a bit funnel-wise and already uh, ahead of the slides. But, um, and yeah, then uh, how to prepare for competition, for instance, natural, how to start with natural horsemanship, equine management, if you want to run stables, for instance, you can, you can think of uh, a lot of different things, but then you are uh, creating again your own book book or your own product actually uh, that you can sell and you can after creating a book about it create a, a course uh, about it as well um, and if you want apply the uh, the do it together and uh, first the do it yourself then the do it together or the do it for you type of funnel building i don't know patrick if you want to add something to this yeah, I, I have somebody in mind actually also from the SFM tribe that um, has written her own book. Her name is Nicole Nagelgast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, she wrote uh, her adventure book and um, she, it's a physical product that she had uh, invented through import experts mm -hmm. and learned how to brand herself. And um, it was just booming. It was before COVID. Um, she she published a book and uh, if you type her name and the adventure book I just left it here in the chat um, you will see her product and how she promotes it and how uh, she um, you know created it she makes ten thousand in revenue ten thousand ten thousand uh, US dollars so um, her product did work quite well and yes, on a monthly um, basis. I, I think on a monthly, I don't know how she does now, maybe weekly. I have no clue how she evolved. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't spoken to her in a while, but I met her in Toronto and um, she, she's, uh, yeah, she, she knew her niche. She always wanted to travel and she uh, made a book out of it. And I think this is just an example of a physical product. You can also implement writing a book in uh, an ebook, for example. Just make you know twenty or thirty pages of something that you know about, and sell it to a niche. You can put your ebook on Amazon, and you can sell it there. You can also find other platforms to to sell it, or you can just you know uh, create an ebook which is a freebie that you can give out to your own customers. And hey, I, I I've written ten pages just about you know how to use um, this type of herb on that horse and you can give it away for free just to basically attract customers and uh, that are eager to learn more about your business and how to use other herbs for example so these are creative and other ways it doesn't need to be physically a book um, it can also be an ebook for example yeah indeed mm -hmm. yeah Thanks for bringing that up. I indeed, I, uh, she's also Dutch, by the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so then uh, this is also something we already uh, mentioned uh, a little bit. But uh, yeah, of course, you can offer courses and online coaching as well. So um, this is, you can start right away with those, with, with this kind of um, offer, but you can also do it as an upsell, as we mentioned. So for instance, if you first write a book indeed, then you can turn it into a course and um, upsell with online co coaching afterwards as well. So um, for instance, if you are an instructor, um, like a horse instructor, then you can also, um, I know that, um, yeah, this Dutch lady also, <laughs> she, um, she sells an online course on, um, how to sit well in your saddle because it's um, especially for dressage um, equestrians a kind of an issue sometimes especially it also depends on, on every horse uh, but uh, yeah th those are th th that's an idea uh, the Tristan Tucker method the CRK training Noelle Floyd she's very famous also for her online courses um, and um, yeah I don't know Patrick you want to add something extra? Yeah, um, I, I always refer back to the community because I think the community is the best place to start and also to see other people, how they do things. Um, you don't have to do anything on your own if you are wanting to offer courses. Um, we have in our mentors SFM platform uh, on how to build your own online business from 
scratch that Stuart is talking about. And um, every, uh, as the slide is saying, that every book idea or every course idea can be sold as a course. And, um, you know, that information packed into something valuable, it's, it's working pretty well. And um, I'm drifting aside a little bit of the equestrian industry because we have over I don't know how many are in the tribe, uh, 20,000 people that are basically cr creating something on their own, not only equestrian related, but um, there are, uh, there's a guy, um, his name is Jared Hall. He is doing his own courses for fitness instructions. He is himself pretty well built and he tells people how to diet and how to train in a proper way. Um, related to an equestrian business, you can, you know, um, if you are an instructor or a coach, you can teach people by, uh, you know, filming your own lessons and uh, how you talk to, to your student and basically make it relatable to the person that is watching. That could be a form of online course that you can offer. CRK training, basically, that somebody from the US, she has her own barn and she um, participates in videos, how she trains her horses. And she also has guest speakers who are on, their own, on her own products and on her own courses, um, which, you know, learn and uh, teach people how to uh, train a horse properly, how to make it more calm or, you know, how to, um, you know, uh, be well prepared uh, before a competition, things like that. Everything can be, you know, sold in a package. And I think that's something if you have, you know, a passion and you're an equestrian and you're passionate about horses, I think that's one of the easiest ways on how to create your own online courses. Uh, there is another person, sorry if I'm dropping so many people here, um, <laughs> but we have so many examples to give. Um, her name is, um, uh, Louis, maybe you can help me, uh, help me. Um, uh, the speaker group, the public yeah, speaker, um, Christine Frey. Yes. Uh, yes. So she uh, created her own Facebook group on how to speak in public. And she created a group and, you know, which was booming. She, she has 5,000 followers now. And, you know, just by setting up a group, she thought about creating uh, an online speaking academy. So she is offering, um, you know, techniques on how to speak in front of people uh, and things like that. And she, she sold it to so many people now. And uh, it's, you know, it's just being creative. Indeed, and those are good examples of how you can use other skills and passions to turn those into online businesses. Because now, of course, we are focusing on equestrian, uh, the equestrian niche. But basically, if you've got other, um, if you've got other passions or skill sets that you you can bridge from there, or even combine them, so you can get as creative as you want. And it's not not um, it doesn't need to be all clear at this moment because for a lot of people it takes a little bit of time and that's okay yeah i mean like lewis said if you combine it if you are a specialist in public speaking why don't you just teach instructors how to you know uh speak better to their students or how to you know use present themselves how, yeah. yeah how to use their voice within the in the in the open field because that's the yeah. thing <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly so uh that's another yeah. example all right, so this was actually the, the last uh, one of the 10 options, um, or of not, not really the 10 options, they're not limited, uh, not at all. The, the, we just listed 10 different ways, but we've got uh, still two different funnels um, that we want to, that, that, yeah. Yeah, if I can just explain in advance, like a funnel is basically the customer's journey. The customer, um, you know, sees your product, is um, signing up to your newsletter whatsoever. And then from there you have his or her email address and then you can upsell your, your product or you can you know, just give value, just give out information that you think your clients can benefit from. That's basically a funnel. 
Yes, good that you mentioned that. <laughs> um, so this is a funnel example, and you can replace everything by something else that you uh, you prefer from. Uh, you can get creative with this as well. But this is just, you know, to sparkle your ideas. So let's say you've, you haven't got a product, but you do have knowledge in the equestrian niche. So we, we can, we can um, uh, you can be a vet, a farrier, doctor, nurses, those things are also types, of, although they are not really in the equestrian niche, but they often see a lot of people coming in um, with, um, uh, with equestrian injuries and they can you can also use that uh, as well but also as we already talked about therapists physiotherapists instructors grooms um, and um, if you have specific knowledge of nutrition or healing maintenance vacation um, by horse or uh, competition trailers horse breeds false discipline cell yeah you, you can name it <laughs> Uh, there are really a lot of different topics. So let's say you, all of those things, they have specific products within their um, knowledge base, let's say. And let's say you sign up with, for instance, with several affiliate networks, you can look up which one has, um, for instance, specific, uh, specific horse nutrition, for instance. And um, maybe the chances are, I don't think you'll find that on Amazon, but uh, you can just um, type in in, uh, in Google like horse nutrition affiliate programs. And then you normally, you should be able to find several affiliate networks. We just named a few here and we've got Amazon, ClickBank, Trade Doubler, um, et cetera. There are many others. And um, let's say you start blogging on your website to earn commissions through affiliate marketing. And in general, this will be low price tag products eh? because we, I think we can agree that uh, if you're selling hay or some uh, horse nutrition, it, it's not something that is super uh, expensive unless you'll get attract people that are ordering like hundred pieces at a time, of course, but that's probably not where you'll be starting. So um, let's say that's your starting entry point. And then at the meantime, if you're gener generating um, an, a, a, a slight income through that, and then you can start adding uh, value by blogging, the people will start to follow you and they, um, they will be ready. And you, they'll also teach you how you can even bring more value to them. And then you can bundle your work, your knowledge or your experience into a book, for instance, and start selling your book at a price uh, and the offer and, and higher profit margin, because of course that's uh, all yours, your own book, your own uh, everything. So you can also gain everything. After that, if they are thrilled about the book, they might be interested in buying a course from you. And this is again, an upsell, which is at a higher price tag. And you can also consider um, after that, if people are still asking you from well, that sounds super interesting, but I'm still not able to apply it myself. You can uh, think about uh, at the highest price tag, which is of course, um, yeah, the, the highest um, tickets offer, then you can start thinking about coaching or consulting or the freelance type of customized work or um, applying the knowledge. So this this could be an example of a potential funnel, but don't get um, too much in, it doesn't need to be a book, it doesn't need to be a course, it doesn't need to be this, it can be all other types, but you can see that th there's a logical following up uh, of, okay, something low price, a bit higher, again, a bit higher, and then at the highest because People will never will never say never, but uh, not many people will immediately trust you to buy coaching from you straight away if they haven't ever heard about you or they can't find anything about you online. So you'll need to gain their know, like, and trust factor, which is something that you can do through this kind of um, through this path. I hope this uh, makes sense. Then this is basically a little bit more service based. So if we are going to the next one, which is a little bit more product based, um, then you can also think of designing your own products because I can imagine that some people, they prefer to create or sell their own products or products or brands, whether it is within the equestrian needs or beyond. Um, so 
because for instance artwork it can be you can create a very nice piece of wooden uh, wood for from um, uh, sculpture of a horse for instance but of course yeah who are you selling it to it might not be only people in within the equestrian niche but again it's just to sparkle some ideas um, you can there are a lot of people that are using social media to sell their uh, fashion and then indeed we have these typical influencers and uh, the more folios you're getting then you'll get people they will um, brands they will send you for free their uh, newest products and they will ask you to wear them and you can keep them or they will even pay you to wear them and create posts about it so as an as an example um, I've got um, um, one of the Belgian uh, championship in, in uh, youth. She re is re um, frequently receiving those kind of uh, fashion items like the, the newest speaker and the newest, uh, you know, all those uh, those brands. They want to sponsor her for Belgian um, championships, for instance. So, but that's uh, within a question fashion. We've got horse tech as well, artwork, horse. Um, yeah, we horses probably not so much but jumps arena everything that's being used also a bit further jewelry which is also again a little bit uh, a bridge further away uh, or even interior design machines equestrian stable equipment I've, be, I've really gone very broad here <laughs> um, so horse box boxes yeah not boxers <laughs> it should be boxes here of course <laughs> So, um, yeah, trailers. That's nice one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, auto auto spelling, of course, I guess. That's um, okay. But um, yeah, or wooden or leather design products. Um, that uh, yeah, y you can even think of agendas, um, training pre training planners, recipes. Again, inspired by Victoria's um, story last week. So you can really get creative. And then when offering products, you can also think of offering basic, medium, and premium premium qualities and offer discount strategies, etc. But uh, I think for now that's already. A bit too far but i just mentioned it just to sparkle um some ideas so um and here i just kept it a little bit more high level so you're creating a first product and that could be uh, you can be selling it through through advertising through social media uh, whatever you prefer because you don't need to you really don't need to do everything if you just prefer um to do something without video and you would like to do uh, using podcasts, for instance, then uh, you can also add value uh, that way or writing, of course, which is also something that you don't need video. Uh, but of course, video does work a lot, especially um, uh, because it's, it's um, uh, yeah, pe people are, are um, yeah, it, it's, easily draws or keeps the people's attention when you do video and uh, it's easier to really show people um, your experience <coughs> or your um, review of something if you are creating a review video for instance if you have to if you have to write it down it's of, of course a quite uh, diff more difficult uh, more, more difficult yeah so um, after that you can start upselling and create a second product um, and um and the third and the fourth this had to be fourth but okay um and basically if those are um within the same strategy line i mean if you are selling for instance um again to, to stick with the artwork for instance if you're selling one piece of art uh, within for around horses, then the same audience will very likely to sell uh, or buy a second, a third, a fourth product from you as well. And this is uh, very, um, yeah, this is of course very interesting for future, um, yeah, for the future and for your, for income streams, let's say. And fashion as well, if you're really um, into a certain design or you have your own way of branding things, like for instance, you have your own um, name, logo, all those kind of things. Um, yeah, people will just, that they will like it and they will follow it. And if you've got a new, um, a new item, then they will, um, yeah, you, they will likely to, to buy it from you. So, um, yeah, I think that's um, to address those two type of funnels. I don't know whether there are questions about those already right now. This is also a pro progressive price on this 
left to right, one to four, le mm -hmm. cheaper, more expensive. Is that what you're intending also for this? Not necessarily, okay. but not it necessarily, but it does. Um, it it you know if people they need a yeah if if they need so if if people just need something it's a bit difficult um, different within product because they will just look for what they are need what they need for instance a horse trailer which is a horse trailer is like a high ticket product we we can agree that it costs several thousands of euros and you can go as crazy as you like but eh, or you can you can buy something. Um, second hand as well but um if they need something like that they might be also looking for specific blankets to put on their horse or you know which is uh complementary but it's not necessarily um it's not necessarily a, a higher price tag of course it's a, it's a lot cheaper but so um in general if they have never heard from you and you create your own websites um i i dare to say that when creating a web shop uh people are a bit less um looking for this no like and trust factor as well as if you're doing uh, offering a service what i maybe want to mention as well because i think that's um for for beginners it it might be overwhelming because for me it was overwhelming uh the sfm has a funnel already ready for you. So you can use their own funnel, which is proven. They, they split test their funnel about um, how people receive it, how people react to it, and how many people purchase. So um, basically, it's sometimes the wording as well, um, difficult. And uh, yeah, you just need to know how to use your words wisely to catch the attention. But you can use their own funnel to uh, then rewrite those words into your own niche as an equestrian and use your own product to promote it. So um, that's something that you can do and something that is already has been done for you in the, in the SFM. Yeah, but I mean, the, the further you are and longer you are in the business, the more likely you know how to write your own funnel. And I, I would suggest that as soon as you become like more of an expert on how to advertise, um, it's, it's better to use your own funnel because people relate to you much better because you're using your own words. Yeah. Okay, so then at last, um, yeah, if you still got no clue where to start in the equestrian niche or beyond, um, then I actually have a little, yeah, we actually have a little uh, exercise because um, sometimes you, you can also bridge from your current job to the equestrian niche. And if that's the case, that's great. But for instance, if you are a goldsmith already, you can create equestrian jewelry, for instance. But of course, for most people, that's not really the case. So um, if you work in a supermarket, for instance, of course, it's quite difficult to bridge to an equestrian business. But um, yeah, then there are still a lot of other options because, for instance, uh, like affi the affiliate marketing model or also selling physical products and drop shipping, you really don't need to, um, you actually don't need to have uh, specific skills um, but you do need some some no you do need knowledge of course so um, and then another option is to think of your passions and your interests and maybe you can find a bridge from there for instance if you like to write in general or within photography or um, yeah you can always decide to think bigger bigger than the equestrian niche as well and that will um, lead us to this exercise which is um, that if you would do a brainstorm for yourself um, on all the things that you love to do, all the things that you're good at and the things you're interested in. And you can list them in like three circles. Then you know where the three circles overlap. That's actually where probably your gold mine is. So those are things that might trigger new ideas. If you, you know, if you feel uh, a little bit overwhelmed by all the ideas, suggestions, and, you know, the endless options that we've listed here, because yeah, We've talked about many, a lot of different things. So if you, you it's, I think it's very good to know, okay, in, in, um, in a broad sense, this is 
this you've got an idea of what's possible but if you have are to drill down on what you really want to do i think you have to start looking that uh, within yourself and um, if you want to do it together with your daughter per then of course together with your daughter you can you could do something like this for instance but um, i think this is really uh, important also because you can start a business in anything but of course you need to if you're not interested or passionate about it, you will, it will be very difficult. Um, so that's, um, so that's why we, um, why we say that it's uh, important that there's like a little overlap here. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So to wrap up, basically, um, we have, of course, the, the, the all in package. So, uh, of course, per, I know that you already, um, you already, um, uh, bought that one, but um, the all-in package basically covers all the things that you need to know that we also covered in here. So um, yeah, for people that are interested in that, they can of course always send us a message or uh, contact us to to um, go for the all-in package or beyond if you're interested for the import experts um, pr program. That's of course and also an option. So if there are questions about that, then we can wrap up and ask you what your ideas are. I don't know, Patrick, also, if you still want to add something. Uh... <laughs> yeah, well, I think um, we covered uh, basically uh, the most common options. And like you say, the all-in package is um, there for basic uh, training, basic foundation that you need for your business. Think about your website first, how you present yourself and about your customer avatar and uh, the rest The rest will follow. I mean, then the next step is creating your own funnel, but everything is explained throughout the, the modules in the all-in package. And Stuart, the host of uh, the, the SFM and co-founder, he basically explains everything that you need to know. And he is um, available, accessible in the SFM tribe, of course, because um, we have over, you know, thousands of people in the online uh, community, he cannot answer everything personally. But this is why Lewis and I are doing the webinar just approachable to you. And if you have any questions that we can cover and help you here as far as we can as well. Uh, the, the last, yeah, <laughs> I think your, your mic dropped or something. It sounded like a mic drop. <laughs> oh, can you hear me better now? Um, slightly, yeah. yeah. Just... Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Now yeah. you're back. <laughs> oh, sorry. It might might be my laptop. I don't know because my uh, I'm un unmuted. But I what I wanted just to say is, um, you know, we do the webinars for you to be most likely approachable. If you have any questions, just ask us. Um, Stuart in the SFM tribe who is doing the modules can answer you as well. We have every month um, a live webinar in the SFM tribe, but because we are over a thousand of people in the community, he most likely will not gonna answer your questions um, because otherwise he wouldn't have a life anymore. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, so if you have any concerns, if you feel stuck or any questions, just keep on asking. Indeed. Yeah. So, I don't know if does anyone have um, questions left for us, or something that was not clear, maybe, or somebody who wants to brainstorm on their how they can bridge from their um, interest or idea. I think Iris um, is also. Good, maybe a bit practical, but how do you get an ebook online? Just a download link. Uh, yeah, that's a version of how you can, uh, you know, create your own ebook online. You just uh, fill in the form, you download it as a PDF that nobody can add or insert something in addition that basically just makes a copy of your product that no one can edit. And then you can use it for a download. You can use a link. Uh, for it. If you want to use it on Amazon, you have to um, subscribe to, to Amazon and then basically create a book cover and uh, insert your 
download link to Amazon that as soon as somebody is purchasing a product or your ebook, they will get the download link uh, directly to an email, for example, or um, you know, just to a welcoming page that will be redirected from Amazon. That's most likely uh, a version. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead because I just wanted to ask you if you know any other. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, another idea is that you host it somewhere online, and somewhere online might sound a bit vague, but of course you can host it on your own website, for instance. But um, or if you have your own funnel tool, like for me, for instance, I'm using Convertry as a funnel tool, and there you can also um, you know upload PDF documents, and then. Uh, you can create just like a single page for that and uh, set a, a download button. And then if people click on the download button, it will am- automatically start to download as well. So for instance, if you have people and you're promising them an ebook and they, um, you can just enter your link over there or even on your one of your articles or wherever you want to publish it, you can just provide them the link to that page and um, so that people can download that. And I'm pretty sure there will be a plugin for that uh, within WordPress, for instance, if you have a website on WordPress. Um, So those are two other options as well. I would recommend just getting people's address because um, you most likely, um, I mean, email address, not their uh, home address. <laughs> but um, what I uh, suggest is because if you have the email address on your own list, you can always approach those people who have purchased your product before and say, hey, my new book is coming out. Are you interested? And if they are, you already have another customer. You already have this customer that first bought from you and turned him into a, fo- uh, you know, a fellow customer, like uh, he's gonna buy your second ebook. So this is why it is valuable to, to have your own list, just to keep connected to your people that you care about. Indeed, and then you can keep uh, providing them value and then um, eventually they will become a customer. That's uh, our belief. (laughs) Um, I don't know if there are any other questions or maybe in the chat because I'm not looking at the chat personally. No, I think uh, Iris, if you don't have any more questions, um, if, if there are any questions that are occurring maybe later on, if we're not on the call anymore, just send us an email. Yeah. yeah very sorry. good. Thank you. And we're a little bit over time, so I think it might be a good time to wrap up here. Yeah. So um, if you have any suggestions for next week's webinar as well, just let us know. Otherwise, we're going to prepare something valuable for you as well. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your time and for for being here. We really appreciate it and value uh, the fact that you are, um, you know, uh, participating because I think everyone can learn from anyone, everyone. So thank you. Fully agree. (laughs) All right. Great. Thank you. See you next week. Next time, next week, next place. Bye. Bye.